my name is Nekbe Obasogye. Today's topic is very, very interesting. It's about the history of the Great Benin Kingdom. And then Ima Swen Izotowa from the ancient city of Benin is going to tell us the history of why Ohenu Kone Neyedu was restricted from entry Benin. You can either call him Ohenu Kone Neyedu or Ohenuwae. I know that some of you guys are already aware of what happened a few weeks ago when some police officers committed a taboo in the land. What happened was that these officers went to a village called Ewikoi to arrest Ohenukoni Neyedo. When we say Ohenukoni Neyedo, we are referring to the priest that never visited Benin. So during the confrontation, the priest told the officers that According to the tradition of the land, he is not supposed to enter Benin. Then the police officers argued profusely that they have the authority to arrest anyone and bring that person to justice in Benin city. And they brought the priest to Benin. Immediately, he stepped his feet into Benin. The palace received a sign. According to what I was also told, they said uh, they experienced a severe downpour of rain in Benin that day. It was a kind of a sign that a taboo was actually committed in the land. They have to slaughter three dogs in front of the police station before Ohenukuni was released and he went back to his village. This incident shows how the rule of law was actually in conflict with the tradition of the land. If we have to analyze this incident from the perspective of the rule of law, the police officers have the authority to arrest anyone and bring that person to justice in Benin. However, they also have the responsibility of contacting the palace to confirm this story before making such an impossible decision of arresting the priest and bringing him to Benin. You see, that's why I said the rule of law was actually in conflict with the tradition of the land. It's a kind of a reminder to us that certain tradition of the land should be incorporated or recognized under the constitution. Otherwise, the same story or the same incident will continue to repeat itself over and over again. From the lens of cultural tradition, the Benin people will consider the violation as a taboo in the land. They are also symbolic because history tells us that Oba Elwari Ogidi Gan the first who ruled the Benin Kingdom during the 1400s that is more than 500 years ago, made this proclamation to restrict Ohenukoni Neyedu or Ohonhuae from entering Benin. And this tradition has never been violated, not until Oba Elware Ogidigan II came into power. That is our current Oba of Benin. You see how symbolic this incident is to the history of the great Benin Kingdom. What a rich culture. I'm so proud of my Benin culture. Oba Tokbe is a long live the king. Anyway, Imaswen is otherwise going to analyze the actual history of why Ohenuko Neyedo was restricted from entry Benin. Just listen to him. This history of about 560 years old has never really been told by historians. Thank God for the job of Dr. Aysen Ehagosa for having to record a man on the 12th of July 1992. That man is late, one Ohen Imatitikwa. He was the Ohen Ohwae Ohwae of Ewo Mori at the time of interview he told him the true history of Ohwae and when a taboo was committed some few days ago in Benin because Oba Nikwenio Neyedo Onalaido it is a 560 years of unbroken custom that was broken few days ago and people became curious to know that 
what really transpired. Why is it that man, that Asian personality doesn't come to Benin? Then from there, I needed to dig deep. And I was able to meet Dr. Aisha Nehagosa, who was able to bring that recorded tape, the interview he had with that man in 1992, and played it to me. From there, I got the full history of a rhinocere, no bani when neo nilido. The history of Obaiwai the first, from what I gathered from that recorded tape, has not fully been recorded. Today, we celebrate a Motan for what she, the role she played during the travail of Prince Ogun, who eventually became Mumbai the first. Today, we celebrate Edo, the land of which Igodomigo, a person of which Igodomigo was named after. But today, we don't celebrate of Wahe. Ohio was the most remarkable figure in the life of Prince Ogun. He was the most remarkable figure in the life of Obaiwai the first. And today, I will prove to every sons and daughters of Benin Kingdom why Obao why Ohio should now be placed in the podium of great heroes and also a great deity. The Ohio deity that we speak about today was not a deity initially. It was a personage whose destiny was intertwined with Obaiwai the first. No wonder. He had, he had to come back during Obaiwai the second to remind him of his total alliance, his total, uh, his total loyalty to his friend Obaiwai. During the travels of Obaiwai, after his two other brothers had passed on, of course, we all know the story of Obaohe, who was the father of uh, Ogun, who was a stepson. During that travel, Ogun was running from one community to the other. For the fear of his life because the, the Edo chiefs or the Benin chiefs were after his life because he was a man that is highly opinionated. He believes so much in his principle. Through all that running from one bush, from one forest to the other, he became a mystic figure. He acquired the ability to command the forces of life and death. One very day, there was a young man called Ogbeide, who was a very stormborn young man. His father had refused to even recognize him as a son because he was so stubborn as a child. One day, Prince, the Prince Ogun eventually became a Baiwari, got a feel that there was someone around, probably on his farm, clearing. And when he looked around, he did not see that person. So after some time, he now saw a footpath. He followed the footpath and he got to a particular tree and he saw some dense bushes. 
Because Prince Ogun was a mystic figure, he realized that, that those dense bushes was not just a natural bush, but rather a human being who turned to. So after some time, the bush cried out loudly that Ogun, Fiegbe Wiregbe, turn around. Then the Prince Ogun turned around, and after which the young bush, the thick, dense bush, turned to a human being. That human being was Ogbede, a very mystic figure. When Prince Ogun accosted him and told him that, where is he from? He said it was with his father who was making life unbearable for him. That um, his father is somewhere not far from uh, uh, where that... Um, discussion was going on and as such he asked take me to your father prince ogo asked Ogbedi to take to take him to his father he took him to his father and his and prince ogun told him that domo sir my name is prince ogun of here oba no eh no bite so e gbe so popa no e dogwali yen here then he made a request that to the father of Ogbedi that he wished that his son be his comrade, one of his comrades. And his father gladly accepted because of the trouble his son has put him through all through his life. Then he allowed him to follow him and told Prince Ogun that. Omona Okwameni Hewa Okwameni He The sun is a body that is likened to a heavy load. Okwameni He Okwameni He So it is not abridged as Okwahe. That Okwahe became his nickname. It became what the destiny hold for him, but his original name was Ogbeide. So, the young man, now later known as Ogwaihe, followed Prince Ogu all through his travels. And before he left, his father gave him Agbaoko, a bag. An ancient bag. Of course, for some of us who are family, familiar with um, the Prince Ogun story, he had a bag, a mystic bag. Agba woko ogo Oh, sorry. Agba woko ogo It was a mystic bag, the bag that gives whatever he asked for. So it was that bag that further helped these two young aspiring oba and an aspiring deity. So in all through the travels, they fought mystic figures in thick forest. They fought great personalities. One of which the history remembers of the prince El, uh, prince ogun's travel with a tree that had worms in his back who was cry the tree lamented of the pain he was going through now what historians failed to record was that during that life of prince ogun of him picking those worms for the tree and the tree giving him one of the most potent power ever recorded in the history of Benin. That, that as I that the tree gave to Prince Ogun. Ohwai was there when it happened. It was not just only Prince Ogun that was in that scenario like other historians have narrated of why was actually with Prince Ogun when that 
matter happened. But I cannot go through of the tree having a lot of worms and crying all through the night that whoever can remove this worm from my back, I'm going to bless him. I know that Wish of Wai and Prince Ogun eventually removed those worms and there was a particular one that was still remaining that did not remove. And the tree also cried that whoever that he is happy that someone has removed those worms from his body. But however, there is still remaining one in which Prince Ogo eventually also removed and the tree now gifted him that that real mystic figure, that real mystic uh, material or a totem that Prince Ogo eventually used in course of its victorious reign. Then, uh, it was during that travail that Prince Ogun discovering that that young Ohwai was a blessing to him, that he told him, he made a vow to Ohwai that he got a real bad he got a real bad translated as this, if I become the Oba of Benin, I will also make you an Oba in Benin. It was a promise that Ewai made Prince Ogun made to Ewai in in their travels. The promise he eventually kept, though, but not without the history which I will narrate. Longer on, they eventually found themselves around Ikbema, Ikbema area of um, Uselu where the, the story of the python and the leopard happened, where the, that place is still there. It was deified. Why I actually made that forest area deified. It's deified and um, a big shrine is there till date. All right. Then it was at that point where Ohio had to tell um, um, why I had to tell the young Prince Ogun that we have done all that we have done for you because during their travail, why also recruited other military men like Oga Nehwa, who was who came from Irwa in present day Esan, eventually became one of the disciples of Ohwai Ake Nisi also became one of the disciples of Ohwaya. Ovaoto Nigiduma also became one of the disciples of Ohwaya. These were all called Ihe. They were no wishes or wizards. They were greater than wishes and wizards. They are called deities of the Edo land. They eventually became deities of Edo land, of which Ohwaya was their chairman as the historian narrated was their overlord and what one was not Prince Ogun. After which they told them that they had washed the stars and the celestial bodies clearly and it is time for him to return back to Benin to become the Oba of Benin. But he should not forget them when he becomes when he eventually becomes the Oba of Benin. So Prince Ogun eventually stepped into Benin and some Passersby eventually saw him and said that we have been looking for you and it is time for you to come become the Obar of Benin. Eventually, we all know that that's when the Mota and the Edo story happened. Um, I don't want to go through. That would have been Ewai, Prince Ogun's story. So it was during that time uh, he was actually now made the Obar of Benin. After he became the Obar of Benin for three good years, he did not remember the good things of why and his soldiers, the role that they played during the time of travails. So Ohwai became very angry one day and he assembled his military might, his Ihe, his Ko Ihe. We call it Ihe or deities because they all eventually became, became uh, deified. It was during this time that they all came to Benin to visit Ewai to remind him that he promised that when he 
when he becomes the Oba of Benin, that he must carry them along. Eventually they came. When Ewai heard that the Ahuayas are coming to Benin, he was, he was shocked because he knew how glorious and mighty these ones, his foot soldiers are. He accepted that they should come. Of course, he opened a very strong banquet for them. He was very happy to receive them. Then, in a quest to annihilate them from the surface of the earth because he could not visualize, he could not visualize sharing his authority with these strong ancient figures, these strong men. He, he resolved to burn them alive. However, he did not succeed. Because these guys were mystical figures. Of Autor Nigeduma was able to open the ground for the other Ihen to follow through. It was Ake who wanted, Ake, Akenisi, who wanted to follow through the door, got a little bit burnt. Then why? All right, uh, uh, casted a very huge cobwebs. So as the fire, the litigation of the fire should not get to his own side of the burning house. Eventually, they all came out of haunt, and Okwai was devastated with the betrayer from his friend, who was now the Oba. But however, the Oba was able to pacify him and was able to, to tell him that um, he had fact that they were going to be a stumbling block to his reign. So, as a very good comrade and um, foot soldier of Obaiwai the first, he allowed the matter died. Instead, he had told Obaiwai that um, Ake was injured and Ake should be well treated. Ake was eventually the, the, the beauty house close to uh, Ewa Road when you are about to ascend the Boba Slope where Ake's wound was nurtured because it became blighted in skin. That Ake eventually became a, a deity of which there are 14 shrines in Benin where Ake deity is being propitiated in the Benin land till date. All right, so after which Obaiwai told him, told Okwai that it is time for him to come back within the metropolitan Benin because he has assignment for him. Ohwai eventually came and came down to and and came to situate at uh, the present day Ibokma area of um, Moritala Mohammed Way when you're coming from first East Secular Road around where the Ibokma has terminated at the present day Sapler Road. That's where the vicinity of Ohwai. Now, Ohwai became an astute farmer at Ikbe. Uh, uh, that is why in Benin, almost in the history of the story or the narration of Ohwai, you must always mention Ikbe because that was where he played almost most part of his life was surrounded by that Asian community. Translated, what it means to a why a do people cannot phantom because it be filtered almost in all life endeavors of a why in his later years. Or by why invited. Why one of this one of the day down to the palace and told him that he has made Benin so great, he has converted Benin from a town to a city, that he has meant with all the celestial figures, he has meant with those who make the world ticks, both physical and spiritual, and he has defeated them all. But he wished to invite God Almighty 
that is Osanudazi, Osanoboa, down to Benin, to see the magnificence of the city. That he wish that Okwai should embark on that journey. Okwai told Obaiwai, I am your sir, not here me. Nobody has ever gone to heaven and returned back. He said, but Nyaga you, I will go and and I will come back. Of course. Okwai embarked on that journey with with his comrade Oga Nehwa followed him. But he remembered that his other comrade Ake Akenisi should also embark on that journey because he doesn't trust him with his wife. The wife of that of that uh, of why was called Irewu. The Benins remember him to be Irewu. Was a wife of of why, but in present for those Ake worshippers, you cannot pray to Ake and not pray to Irewu, because eventually Ake stole the wife of his master Irewu and got married to her. All right, so obviously. The story lingers on, and then Ake was able to meander his way, was supposed to follow his master down to heaven. He was able to meander his way and ran back to the house, woo a wife's wife, and stole and stole her. They both eloped down to Isi area of the present day Uhu there. Then, eventually, a wife and organ were the two figures that eventually embarked on the journey to the spiritual world. The story goes further and said that they got to the spiritual world and they met Abigail and Amy and they were able to fight them off. But he, or why was told that when you address God in heaven, your your two feet, your your leg must not touch the ground, but you must kneel down. And the heavenly name that was given to Ohwai was Idalu. That was what he was called when he got to heaven. The heavenly, the, 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 the tenegrins of the heaven had referred to him as a Dalu. I think that name should be recessed upon what it actually means. But that was the name he was given when he got to the spiritual realm. So that very day he, when he was to address God at this could be reality, this could be mythology. However it is, it, they said the Benins highly believed it happened. So, of course, uh, he went, uh, when he got to the presence of God, he shook his hand inside his Agba Woku and, and instead brought out two big tortoises, which he kneeled upon. Then he brought two big snails, which the other two foot was placed upon. So eventually he was able to solve the puzzle of, of having to kneel down and not touch the floor. Because he was kneeling on the two tortoises and his two other toes were, were, was placed on the, on, the, on the shells of the snail. So he was able to convince God to come to the city of Ewai. His master, his oba, his king. All right, God of mine, as the myth goes or the story goes, God agreed to come to Benin, to come and to come and see that city. But when God was descending, he first descended at Agbo, and of course, he first descended at Agbo, which is now called Agbo till date. Before he further transversed to the city of Ewai. Now, he was expecting God to pass through Ikbe. So, he was waiting for Ikbe. When God came, he meant with Obaiwai. And Obaiwai had had long conversation, long conversation. So, he now requested, where is my, where is the, the brave man that came to call me from our board? They said he was already at Ikbe waiting for him. So, they went some errands, some, some of the Omadas were sent to fetch of why from Ikbe. Alright, so he eventually came and as he was coming, the God was about ascending. So and he told God that you cannot ascend to heaven without giving a gift of real magnificent potency 
to his Lord, the Abba Benin. And he said, and the God asked him, what do you want from me? And he said, that, that totem that you are holding is what I request from God. And God eventually obliged him and gave that totem. That totem is now called Edote Isemerigo. Isemerigo. It is a totem that every Oba used in sealing any agreed upon oath, covenant, conversation. What it means is just like the great seal of the British that uh, it's just the same that when you agree, it's just like the, the gavel, the the legislative gavel that after an agreement, a law has been passed, you hit it. That is the function of Issem Erigo. I'm sure the Benins, some of the Benins, they, they know what that Issem Erigo means. If you see some of the artworks, you see the Oba holding the Issem Erigo. All right. I will not be able to show you people what Issem Erigo means, but some of those who are curious can can chat me up and I can send you pictures of the Semerigo. Now that is Semerigo, he's different from a Ase, a na Unoma or Unoma that the tree gave to Ewai. So Ewai was given in his lifetime was given two potent totem. The one given to him by the tree and the one given to him by God Almighty. Like the God in heaven or Sanudazi. So then after God obliged him with that totem, he gave the totem to Ahuai to give to Obai Ahuai. He insisted, Ahuai insisted that no, 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 he still would not let him leave until he obliged him with three things. He has three demands. Demand number one, he doesn't want, um, he doesn't want uh, rain to fall during the daytime. Just the nights uh the second one i can't really remember the second one the body third one was to grant him to grant his lord the the by the, 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 the spirit of uh, immortality the gift of immortality uh, well that one is another long story i don't want to delve into that eventually um God wanted to grant Obaiwai the spirit of immortality, but something happened. He could not. He, could, he did not pass that test. He did not pass that test. All right. That's why the gift of immortality was not granted on upon him. So after all that saga had happened, God came. Then, as God was about ascending, He grabbed the chain at which He was climbing back to heaven. That is the mythological discussions. So uh, Obaiwai pulled down three three strings of that chain so uh, when you go to the ohwais shrine in uh, evokoi to date you see that to uh, the original three chains that ohwai pulled pulled from the long chain that god was using to ascend back to heaven still remains there still there and it it is it is longer now because since Obaiwai was the 13th Oba, and when you add 27 more Oba, that therefore means that you have 27, uh, uh, 27 uh, strands of chains has been, his longer has been added to the, to the original three. So when an incoming Oba comes, a chain of in three locks will be added. When another incoming Oba comes, a chain of three, till date, at the Owai Shrine at Ewokoi. Still being practiced today because of um, Owai pulling down the last three shrines. Eventually, God ascended into heaven and left. Then the, the, the test of immortality came, which I had said earlier. I don't want to go through it. That's another story of its own. All right. Um, Obai Owai did not pass that test, so the gift of immortality was not granted. But every other two... Uh, request that he made was quite impossible because God had to explain to him that this is the reason why there is day, this is the reason why there is night, this is the reason why your request cannot pass, but I can't grant your master the gift of immortality. This was the tremendous role of why I played for Prince Ogun as a prince and after he became the Oba. Don't forget that Ohio was always with him 
in the expansion of his of the then Benin kingdom to Benin Empire. He was always with him. Owaya was the most trusted general, both spiritual and physical, of Ewai, who, who never for one day betrayed his master. So Ewai woke up one morning and asked that they should call it, they should go and call Owaya. And Owaya, as usual, was already at Ikbe. Uh, yeah, of course, he, uh, he was always at Ikbe. So when he came and he told him that, I remembered when I was a prince, I made a promise to you that as I am Oba, you will also be Oba. Because Oba Iwana realized that the word Oba, king, is very heavy. And he said that, uh, I'm going to share the burden of the Oba to every sons and daughters of this land, including you. You, your own is special because I had promised you. So it was during Obaiwai the first, we started in, in his bid to share that bondage, that, 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 sorry, that heaviness of kingship amongst all the Benin people. That is where you start saying, Obawowie, that's Obowie, Obagavan, Obavan, Obota, Obewahu, you know? So that's where these words came. In a bid, Obioba, Ohuoba, that's when he shared all these responsibilities. He wanted people to also feel the, the intensity, the heaviness of being a king. Eventually, he told Owai that there are four ancient roots to Benin. In this four ancient roots, I wish you hold one of those roots becomes your domain. He said, but however... We will test this four ancient root with sham to really know which should be highly fortified, which in the future a great wall is going to come from. And if a great wall is going to come from any of these four ancient roots to Benin, you must hold forth in this ancient root. So they went to Uselu, they tested. The sham there, the sham on our lumi, you know, dance around and, and discover that they are not good. There's no, in the future, there's not going to be great wall coming from the tested Ekewan area and the tested the Sokomba area. Now, when they now got to Ikbobahi River, they discovered that a great wall will come in the future through the Ikboba slope. I presume that be eventually became the Benin Ida War. And he told them that the charm that we have displayed here today has shown that. Something huge is going to come from here. Now, from this Ikboba slope down, it's your region. That is Wogio Bage Kemakba Ari Kenoriri Se Imuwe Wanuaba Nume Kenakba Ogo Udena Vedeno Kwabe Lairi. And of course, it was a confinement of which the semi regal sealed that on no account because he's an oba he has made him an oba you know that sort of a thing so that he should move further from that place and establish where whatever he want to establish at that region but never on 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 record on historical record should he cross they slope down to Benin. Eventually, Ohwai tanked him and transversed. He got to, the first community he got to was Anye. When he got to Anye, Anye, a lot of persons are aware of Anye community. <laughs> Coincidentally, before I heard about the story of this Anye, I, had, I was in Anye community just last week. So when I was listening to the story just yesterday here, and I heard of Anya. I was like, I was in that community just a week ago. And I was like, what, what does this community ever? It doesn't, I've never heard of it. And now, just today again, I heard of the community that it was the first community when Okwai left Benin. He got the, so he wanted to turn to a river. He could not. Then he now looked up front and saw a woman. And then I said, okay, a woman was spying, spying on him. So that's why he could not turn to a river. 
So he, he now planted an healing tree and planted and put some pots and all that. That shrine, I was told that is still there and that shrine is called Ihiyan Hiyan. Then after which it transversed from Anye to Aho. When it got to Aho, there was a woman who had pots of water lined up. So he begged the woman, Same me won, give me water, let me drink. The woman refused and said that there was no water. So when the woman left, he looked through in he looked into the, the pot and he saw there was so much water. Then angrily he left. And when the woman later returned to fetch water from the pot, he discovered that all the pots were now empty of water. When he got to the boundary of her hall, he brought he brought out his magical bag and brought out a tool which he pointed towards her hall. And I said, Ke dene nakba unhamame baho. I heard that community they're having a lot of water problem. I don't know, maybe because of the the cost that Ohwai placed on that community for denying him of drinking water. Just like the parable of the the woman who fetched water for Jesus Christ. And this one, in this case, this one denying him. Just like Jesus Christ was denied before a woman was giving him water. I think that was the same case that happened to Ohwai. He was also denied and he placed a cause that uh, from this day forward, that community will suffer water. Said after he passed through that community, now go to a community called Ogwe, Igweka. After Igweka, he now got to Iduenga, Idu, Iduenga, I think it's is it Iduenga or Uduenga? Iduenga, eh hi, Iduenga. That was when when he got there, he met a man who was the head of that community. The man took him in, and after which the man left. Then, one way or the other, he felt unsatisfied with his journey of why, and and planted a a shrine. We, uh, sorry, and planted a sort of a, all the shams he had. He placed it at the Ukoni, the kitchen of the of the man's house. All right, he placed all the shams he had and he placed it inside the ukoni because the house he was staying could not house it, there was no space. So he placed all the charms, the pots, every of the the spiritual implements that he had was placed inside the ukoni. Now, after which he left with the wife, the senior wife of the man who helped him, and of course, um. During that time, he he slept with the woman. And whether forcefully, I wasn't there, so I can't tell what really happened. But he still remember he slept with the woman. And after the sexual intercourse, and I told him that from henceforth, I uh, mean, that the son that will, his son will be born from that sexual intercourse. The woman was already very old. Maybe 85 or 90. She never thought she can give birth again. That the son, when the son grows up, that should tell him that he, he will become a very strong deity. That nege ya we mi ava. No, it should, that uh, it's, it's, uh, it should, it's abolished from the worshippers of the deity that his son will become. So nege ya we mi ava. That is, he should not have sexual intercourse during the daytime. Of course, is still abolished in the worshippers of Ohwai and the worshippers of Ake to date in Awemiava. Okay? And he told the woman that when the son is born, that Noryu Ukonini, that where he placed those shams, that Ake, there's a magical pot that he must carry water every Ekenaka, every day of Eken, to 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 pray for the young boy because he will become a very great figure. So and you're not told the woman that when you eventually born the son, the name will be Iyadome. Iyadome. I Y A D O M W E N. Iyadome will be the name of the son. Then eventually he moved further down a bit from that Iduan High. And 
He planted two hickamy tree and eventually turned into a big river, which we now call the Okwai River till date. When the woman returned back to the house, he had told the husband that Okwai had forcefully slept with her. And in anger, the husband sent some of his of, of Igbama, some of the youth in the community, to go and arrest him and bring him back. On getting there, they discovered that Okwai has turned into a mighty river. So after some months, eventually the woman took in, she was pregnant, and eventually gave birth to a son. And that son, of, of course, the father already told her that the name of my son will be called Iyadome. Then, however, the woman also named that son Ose. The reason was because everything that the man of why told her came to pass so the woman had named the son or said not long enough of course the power of the son of the young son was from ukoni where the charm was placed no wonder it was one of his names is ohe nukoni because the charm that edifies the young boy yadome was placed inside Ukoni by his father, Hwaya. So the mother died not long after that. Uh, the, the, he was still very young. And it was a stepmother that took care of the young boy. And the stepmother's name was Ikoi. Ikoi. So after which, the because the power of the young boy kept increasing every single day. So in in in, in in a way to guide the the young boy from from harming the the people of that community he moved them further he moved them further a bit to a, to a place that was not established and eventually that community eventually became a where ikoi that is where the 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 Ohio headquarter is being propitiated today. So, because of that, the young Yandome became the first Oba Nihwen Yu, because his father was not alive to be to take that crown or to take that name, that name of Oba Nihwen Yu Ne Yedo. All right, whether you call it Ohen Nohwae, Oba Nihwen Yu, or Ohen Nukuni, is the same personality. So, of course. We cannot. We now know why he does not. He cannot travel to Benin. He cannot cross that Igboba slope. So, of course, there is a festival done every year that that starts from Ewokoi and terminates at Igbe. The Ohwai festival. The Beninese call it Igboleki. So that festival, I heard, is still being practiced till date. All right, of all Ohwai. Uh, disciples and worshippers and all the Ohe or Hwae in in different communities, but the headquarter it's a Wokoi, and the and the Ohe there is the overlord of all the Ohens of other Hwae in other communities. Now this is a story that should be shared. This is a story that should be told. Hwae as such. A great figure. I respect him so much, and um, it is a story every Binima must tell. That Ohwai is not just a deity; he was a personage who became a deity for his astounding personality, for all the things he did for the Benin land and his lord, Obaiwai the first. I'm sure that some people are already saying that. Why is it that it was um, a why that that boundary was demarcated and? Why is it that he's doing it? Why that that boundary was also broken? Is it a main coincidence or just history trying to reoccur? One cannot tell the mysteries of the Edo land, the mysteries of 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 what God used in establishing this unrivaled, this unequaled kingdom, and and funnily, this Ohanwa is not the only ancient personality that does not. That is forbidden to enter Benin. There are other two Asian personalities. For now, I can't share all the stories, but I hope that we now know that Ohwai 
is a great man. I'm sure Association of Great Benin Descendants is going to look into the celebration of this great man. We are not looking at him as a deity. This man is on fire. He's a personality and should be celebrated. For today, the Yoruba celebrates Moremi. Moremi is a deity. But first, Moremi was a personality. That is my historical perspective. Ohua is not just a deity. was a personage that played the most dramatic role, the most inspiring role during Obaiwai. And I can authoritatively say that if, all, if Obaiwai had not meant the young Obai, they would eventually became Oba, who eventually became Ohua. I'm sure that the story of Ewai won't have been as great as it is today. So Ohua's destiny was tied around what Ewai eventually become. And because of that, he should be celebrated. And don't forget that Oba of Benin still remains the greatest king on planet Earth. And it bear Ewai Agi Obase.